In part one, we looked at all the various filtering options available in the Monitoring Flows report. Part two was all about the default column headings in the results table and what they mean. Part three looked at the results of a search, and now we'll look at the flow details pop-up. If you're troubleshooting problems with performance, or anything to do with flow behavior, the flow detail pop-up is a great place to start. Remember, flows aren't held for very long, up to about 24 hours, depending on how busy the appliance is. You can retrospectively see what happened a short while after, or troubleshoot a live flow. Once you've found the flow you're interested in, see part one for help with that, you can click on the I button to bring up a wealth of information about the flow. There is no difference between looking at the flow live versus retrospectively. The information stored is the same, other than the live flow stats can be refreshed while active. There are many tabs here, but the most useful ones for troubleshooting are the general tab, We'll go through this in detail in a moment. The optimization tab gives us some boost related data, things like whether boost was on or not, if it was bidirectional, or if there was an error and so on. The NAT tab is useful for internet breakout to determine what the public IP was for the flow. In the WAN SNAT section, you'll see type source NAT. The NAT IP is the WAN interface IP that was used. This may or may not be public, depending where the final NAT gateway to the internet is. And the original IP is the client's IP that started the flow. So let's look at the general tab now, starting with the root section. This tells us which root policy was used. Unless you're using scheduled maps, it'll probably be map one. Priority in map tells us which rule was matched and which ACL within that. This allows you to go through your ACLs and rules to determine why a match was made here. Don't forget, rules and policies are matched top down. First match wins. Overlay confirms the overlay name matched. Configured TX action. This is what the overlay says should happen. TX action is what actually happened. Usually this will be the same as the configured TX action, but can be different. For example, the end-to-end -end overlay mapping feature can override policy. Rx action is the path the inbound packets arrived upon. Usually, this will also match Tx action, but if asymmetry is present, intentionally or not, the entry hit may be different. Tx reason will almost always say primary. Application confirms the application matched based on port number or possibly a domain match, depending on application definitions. Application group is the group the application is part of, if applicable. Traffic category is a best guess as to whether the flow is video or voice. However, this information isn't used to make any traffic steering decisions. Protocol is pretty straightforward, TCP, UDP, ICMP, etc. Using stale map entry, this will usually be no, meaning the flow has used the current configured set of policies. If a flow is active and new policies are pushed, you might see yes. Nothing to be concerned about either way. Flow direction confirms if this flow is inbound or outbound. Outbound means the SIN was seen by this appliance first on the LAN side and policy decisions were made here. Ingress and egress interface should confirm direction as well. A note on this, you may see a flow that is inbound only and has limited stats. This simply means packets were only seen in the WAN to LAN direction. It could have been asymmetric, it could have been a flow using an inbound port forwarding rule to a destination that didn't reply. Flow redirected from will report a peer appliance if flow redirection is configured. Auto opt transit node is a legacy field from the WAN optimization days. This will usually be blank on an SD WAN. LAN side VLAN will report any VLAN ID seen on the LAN side. Subnet. This one is important to note as this is partly how a routing decision is made. If a peer appliance advertises the destination subnet, it will be shown here with the appropriate metric. 
and the TX action should match a tunnel from that peer, with a few exceptions such as in hub and spoke deployments, where it may not match. Internet flows will almost always follow a 0000/0 route to either backhaul or breakout. Internal flows may follow a summary or more specific subnet to a peer appliance. Internet flow yes will confirm if the internal subnet table has the destination listed or not, and whether this flow will be considered as an SD WAN fabric flow or for routing via the breakout traffic to internet and cloud services PIO feature if the flag is yes. WAN routing will confirm the tunnel and interface used on the WAN side. LAN routing will confirm the interface only if it's a layer 2 path, interfaced and next hop if it's to be routed on, or self if the flow is destined for the appliance internally. You may also see reference to the loopback interface here. Alright, that's the route section done. See you in part 5 for the rest of the tabs.